PNW Best Life video. This one's about an epic battle I had just earlier this morning uh, with the Chinook on the river here, and it was just, uh, it was just amazing. Ah. It was the third fish I hooked uh, today, and and uh, it was, I mean, it took me a hundred yards downstream. Big fish on, coming down. Oh shoot. Just incredible morning on the river and I want to share all that footage with you and more but also just uh, you know what I'm doing on the river here I know I've covered this in some of my other videos but uh, float fishing is just an incredibly effective way to get uh, king salmon uh, on the river as they're making their journey uh, up to spawn so or back or back to a hatchery so here, here's some here's some uh, here's some tips here's some rigging and some gear First, first, let's just talk about rods for a second. So you'll see in this video, uh, I'm trying to fish this back eddy behind uh, some fast flowing water. It's really not, it's really not the kind of uh, water you can fish without the right kind of rod. And and 10 six is probably a minimum. Uh, I I'm I've been using this thing for uh, like a decade now. The uh, the Saint Croix Avid series. Uh, I don't think it's in production anymore. If you can find this on. Uh, Craigslist though, um, you'd be, you'd be in business, but you know, I'll give you the rating here. So we got the, uh, um, 10, six medium power, fast action, um, eight to 12 pound and a quarter to three quarter, three quarter ounce lure, lure rating. So find a rod sort of in that range, <coughs> you're, you're <coughs> good to go. But 10, six is important because you need to be able to get your line off the water. Uh, to keep it in the strike zone. Every fish I hooked today uh, basically was was uh, a factor of being able to keep it uh, in this back eddy for long enough to get uh, to get bit. So there we go. Put the fish up. All right, a couple of things with uh, float fishing for king. So you know I've got my uh, Shimano Corrado uh, bait casting reel here, low profile reel. I really like this for for um, for all my That's casting quick. rods. I, I run this reel. There's other cheaper options out there too, but this has been really, really uh, good for me. And um, one of the things that you do, you're gonna wanna do, um, let me switch to the other side and you can see the drag. When you're float fishing for kings, uh, you set that drag as tight I as, as you can bit. set it, like just set it all the way down. Uh, you need that hook, the point of that hook, that tine, to uh, be able to penetrate into the just bony, you know, very hard mouth of the Chinook. Um, you do not want to be losing fish because you didn't get a good hook set. Um, and you know, I, I reel down when my float goes down until I feel that fish and then I swing. And I want to make sure that hook is buried. As I as the fight starts, I might I might just back it off just a tick. Um, I I want the fish to run. I want some give. I want it more. I want to be able to control my thumb right on the spool, feather the spool as I'm fighting it. Um, I, I don't, you know, I don't want to just all to be down to my drag. Plus, you wear the drag out faster, and you'll be, uh, you, you fight enough fish in here, and you'll be, you'll be getting that drag replaced uh, pretty quick. So, so that's kind of my one of my fish fighting things that I do. Uh, another thing is, is you, you side, you side pressure. You know, a lot of times you see people, they're just, you know, just pulling up, pulling back on it. You know, keep your rod in a side pressure position, and try to keep it in the position you you initially hooked that fish. You don't know how that fish is hooked. Right, it gets, um, and you want to stay above it. You know, with that same side pressure. If it gets, if it gets above you, you let it go above you. You don't know how that hook is going to change direction in its mouth uh, when when the fish is all of a sudden in a new new direction. So it, it goes up, you go up. It goes down, you go down. Keep tension on it, um, and and you know you won't lose um, you won't lose too many fish. Although you'll always lose fish. It's a feisty fish. That's probably better than both of the ones I had earlier this week.
really strong. I don't bring a net down with me bank fishing. You know, normally uh, I, I just, I try to beach them and, and tail them and beach them. And I was able to do it with this smaller fish. And you know, uh, you know, you kind of get them a little bit tired out, you kind of drag them a little bit out of the water and you got to check the fin, you know, um, especially where we are fishing, if, if you can only keep uh, fin clip fish, you got to check that fin before you, you don't want to drag a, uh, you know, a wild fish or unclipped fish on the beach and then, you know, have to release it and, and uh, who knows if it makes it to the spawning ground or not. So, you know, check that fin and then, uh, and then give yourself a little bit of slack like I do here and then, and then um, you know, pull, pull on it, the part that's hooked and then grab that tail and, and, and check it on the beach. It's super helpful if you have someone around who can help you as well. How's it going? Uh, yeah, well, I got that one there, but... Yeah. Ah, <coughs> uh, it's probably an adult, but it's close. It's fat. I gave up a good fight. They bite really good in here on eggs. So I got I got two fish on uh, Tuesday when I was here. One was in the wa fast water, and one was on the other side. And then this morning was on the other side. So I, I try to fish it all, but I, uh, I haven't hooked any on the slow. I would think they would bite right in the slow side here. Well, I know they like to travel there too, so, but uh, hasn't happened yet. All right, so let's talk some terminal tackle here. Here's what I'm doing in terms of terminal tackle. I've got five eighths ounce Bomac float. I got my bobber stop bead above that. Below that, I have like an eight millimeter bead just to protect the knot. It connects to a five eighths ounce inline swivel. And then that swivel is gonna connect to my leader, which I'm gonna tie on here and show you real quick. Uh, I like to use the inline weights and it's important to use uh, the same weight that matches the, what the rating on the float is. There he is. There's Sean. So if it's a 5 8 ounce float, use a 5 8 ounce weight or, or half ounce, something close. That way your float will stand straight up and down. And you, as you're fishing, you can see, you know, are you, if it's tilting forward, sure, you're on huh? bottom, uh, and you can come up above bottom, which is where you typically get bit. Um, I've got a, I've got a, I got 20 pound floral leader here, about three feet of it, two and a half, three feet of it. Uh, three out Gamakatsu hook, and this is one of my uh, favorite things to do with the, the terminal end of the tackle. Is this is a little um, a little bait weight uh, size 12, whatever the smallest one is, and I, I like to use these bait weights because uh, they keep you know uh, eggs that you cure, you know salmon eggs. They tend to be neutral buoyancy, and so when you're trying to dial in an exact depth, you don't know exactly um, exactly where you're at. And uh, th this allows you to be able to do that and, and adjust your, your bobber stop knot so you come up exactly to where, uh, where you're gonna get those hookups with those kings. So um, I'll also use split shot at times or, or run you know, naked with nothing, just a, just a leader. Uh, it just depends on the clarity of the water and the situation, but this is my go-to. I like to run this by default. Uh, it looks pretty old though. Yeah. Let me see if I can, yeah. I've got a white belly. I'll just leave him, leave him in the water, leave him in the water, leave him in the water. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it's a old, older hen. Older Yeah. She wasn't gonna cut good at all.
fish came right up uh, to the surface when I hooked him. <laughs> that was pretty, oh, that's a brighter fish. Oh yeah, whoa. Yeah, that's a bigger fish. Goodness, you guys see that fish? It's a nice, whoa, it's a nice fish. Gotta get him out of these. Oh no, 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 no. Yeah, I know. It's gonna be impossible to turn around. He gets over there. He's already over there. Coming down, big fish on, coming down. Yeah. Yeah. 
a big fish, dude. Step, so get, yeah. Like that. Then, oh, yeah, baby. Let's see here. There we go. Hey. We gotta keep him out of that big flow there. Oh man. Thank you. You guys have a net? Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh shoot. You're trying to hold him right here. I don't know if you can get behind him. Oh my god, just broke it off. Is it a hatch? Oh, are you serious? Wow. Oh, tail, there we go. Easily up the king. You gotta stop biting it. <laughs> oh man. Dude. <laughs> Thank you. Holy crap. Big shout out to everyone, again, who helped me uh, land that fish. I mean, that was, uh, that was seriously <laughs> a challenge. Uh, and uh, and um, everyone's so super helpful, super, super uh, nice and, and, and good to fish with down there on the bar, so. Oh, thanks again, man. I know, right? What? It was a wild. Oh no. Yeah. I, took you for a ride, I know. We got it in the net though. So. Yeah, was it a good color? Yeah. Oh, it would have cut just great because oh, when they're right. fat like that, even yeah. if they look a little uh, dark, they cut like. But you know what? Landing it after that long of a chase, man. It oh. feel good. It feel well, good. it broke. It broke off just as he got it in oh, the no. net. If you enjoyed this epic uh, uh, king salmon battle. Uh, you know, subscribe, like, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Uh, you know, I'm sure there's many more of those coming, but you just gotta, you gotta stay tuned and, and, uh, and, uh, <laughs> you know, get notifications. So the next time I hook a big king, uh, and get it all on video, you'll, you'll be, you'll be dialed in. You'll be right there.